Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. My name is Cassandra and I'm gonna take you through this pre-ride yoga stretch. So a really great warm-up sequence to do before you go out and ride. Uh, we're really going to focus on hips, low back, and also getting into our calves and our ankles, but I'll add some few poses as well that help to open up our shoulders and work on our spine. So a short but full body flow. This is actually my own personal practice that I do every time before I go out to ride my horse. Um, riding is awesome, but it takes a huge toll on your body. You really need to make sure that you stretch before and after each ride. And this is a sequence I shared on Instagram not too long ago before I went out to my lesson and a bunch of you asked me to record it. So here it is, short and sweet, no props required. And we're going to begin in a forward fold at the top of the mat. So you can just stand with your feet about mat width distance apart. Bend your knees as much as you'd like and just let your belly kind of drape over your thighs. You can grab a hold of your elbows and just sway a little bit side to side. So we're trying to stretch along the posterior chain, all of the muscles that kind of start from your big toe and go underneath the feet, all the way up the back of the legs, all the way along the spine and towards the crown of your head. And you can have your legs straight or bent. I like to have a bit of a bend in my knees, especially if this is my first kind of practice of the day. And now go ahead and relax your hands back down to the mat. Bend your knees even more so that you can bring your feet a little bit closer in towards each other. And we're gonna do an IT band stretch. So you're gonna cross your right foot behind the left one and roll onto the outer edge of that right foot. Try to bend your left knee and keep your right leg straight. At the same time, you're gonna walk your hands over towards the left side of your mat. Think of pushing out into your right hip as you roll onto the edge of that right foot. So we're looking for a big stretch from our right hip all the way down along the side of our leg. Try to relax your neck and your head. And let's go to the other side. So uncross the feet. This time your left foot crosses behind the right one. Roll to the outside edge of your left foot. Walk your hands to the right. And as much as possible, see if you can keep your left leg straight while bending into your right knee. I know this is a very sensational pose. This tends to be an area of tightness for a lot of riders, myself included. And coming back through to center, let's find Malasana, your yogi squat. So widen your feet, bring your heels in and your toes pointing out at about a 45 degree angle. And then you can drop your hips down. So I want you to use your elbows to push your knees open. At the same time, you're trying to lengthen the crown of your head up towards the sky and roll your shoulders down and away from your ears. You need to engage and activate through your glutes here so that even if your arms were taken away, your knees would not buckle in. You wanna still be actively engaging and pressing your thighs out. Growing a little taller from this pose. And let's find our first downward facing dog. Plant your palms, shoulder width distance apart and step your feet back. Feet are about hip width distance apart or so. Focus especially on your calves and your ankles here. Bend your right knee, straighten your left leg and push down into your left heel. And switch sides, bend your left knee, push down into your right heel. So really lengthening all the way up from your right glute down to your knee, from your knee to your ankle. And finding your more neutral stance in downward dog, so maybe both knees are bent a little bit here. Let's stretch our right leg up towards the sky, bend your right knee, open up your hips, so a big thigh stretch here. And we'll step our right foot forward in between the hands to the top of the mat for a low lunge. So my right knee is on top of my ankle, and this is actually called equestrian pose. So as you can imagine, it's a pretty good one to do. You can sink your hips down, just keep your fingertips to frame that front foot and focus on opening through your heart, dropping your shoulders down and away from your ears. So inviting the psoas to release, stretching through our left hip flexors and through the inner thighs a little as well. 
And as you push down into your right heel, you're gonna lift your upper body up and we're gonna add a quad stretch from here. I want you to lengthen your tailbone down, pull the lower belly in and really lift out of your lower back. From here, see if you're able to grab a hold of your back left ankle, maybe with one or with both hands. If you're reaching with both, think of squeezing your shoulder blades behind you and opening through your chest a little bit more. So really getting into our quads. And carefully release this. Tuck the back toes under so you can lift your back knee off the mat. And we're gonna straighten our right leg and I want you to flex that top foot. So flex the right foot. And you might even be reaching with your hand to pull your toes in. So again, we're working on that range of motion into our ankle so we can get our heels down. Although I say that, but even if I have the range of motion, I still can't really seem to get my heels down, but it's okay. Just really stretch out into the back of that leg. And let's release back into your downward facing dog. Step the right foot back to meet the left. Stretch it all out here. And we'll go to the second side. Left leg rises, bend your left knee, open up your hip and find your low lunge. Left foot forward between the hands to the top of the mat. Framing your front foot with your palms here, lifting up through your chest and just letting gravity pull your hips down. And you can have the back toes curled under or pointed back, doesn't matter. You might notice one side might feel a little stiffer than the other. Totally normal to have some asymmetry in our body. And let's add our quad stretch from here so you can lift up. And you're gonna keep your shoulders over your hips, your tailbone reaching down, lower belly drawing in. Just from doing this, you might already feel a quad stretch, but you can add on to it by reaching back with one or with both hands for the ankle, pulling the heel in towards the glute. Staying lifted up tall, squeezing your shoulder blades behind you. The more you really try to lengthen your tailbone down, the more you're going to feel this one, as if you're trying to press your hips forward. Releasing this, let's find our variation of pyramid pose. So you can lift the back knee off the mat, straighten your left leg and flex your left foot at the same time, maybe using your hands to pull and lift those toes even higher as if you're curling them back towards your shin. At the same time, you're pushing down into that back right heel. And release, downward facing dog. Step the left foot back, big stretch in here. And now just bring your knees down to the floor. Keep your toes curled underneath you and start to press your hips back towards your heels so you're stretching through your feet. I like to come up onto my fingertips and crawl the hands out in front of me, keeping the elbows lifted off of the mat as I bring my forehead down. So just kind of stretching into our shoulders. <sighs> One more big breath in here. And flatten your palms, come up to tabletop pose on hands and knees. You're going to keep your hips directly over the top of your knees and then walk your hands out in front of you for your puppy stretch. So forehead melts down towards the mat, but this time your hips stay lifted up high, focusing a little bit more on our upper back, stretching through the shoulders. And slide forward onto your belly, into your sphinx pose. So your hips come down on the mat, little back bend here. Same thing, I want you to think of pushing your pubic bone into the floor, lengthening your tailbone towards your heels, and then lifting and growing a little taller through this pose. And 
and let's release. So we're either going to come into saddle pose, another very well-named equestrian type pose. This is a deep stretch for the quads. It's not suitable for everyone's knees. So I'm gonna give you an alternative. Let me just show you the traditional variation of the pose first. So you're sitting with your heels on the outsides of your hips. So I'm face, if I'm facing towards you here, I have my knees hip width distance apart, my ankles and my feet are to the outside and I'm kind of rolling my calves out of the way. So that's what I want the lower body to be looking like. And then you can lift and tuck the pelvis under before setting your hips back down. Keep your knees and your shins pressing down on the mat and see if you can maybe start walking your hands back. Maybe you're just coming up onto your forearms or maybe you're lowering down and stretching your arms up overhead. I don't want your knees to lift off the mat. If your knees are screaming and this is just simply not a suitable pose for you, you can instead just do a reclined butterfly, soles of the feet together to touch and lowering down this way. Otherwise we have five breaths in the pose of your choice. This reclined hero or reclined saddle pose a really wonderful one here, but you do need to make sure you're not curving too much into your lower back. Find lots of lift and length along your spine while also pressing the tops of your knees down into the mat, pushing into the tops of your feet. And whether you were in reclined butterfly pose or saddle, we're all going to lift back up. I like to push my hands into my feet, tuck the chin to the chest, and then lift on up. And let's open our legs out into a straddle. So wide legs here. And as wide as is comfortable to you, to start, I like to bring them a little bit narrower and just kind of hold myself up. I'm gonna bend into my knees, flexing through the feet, and just see if you can drop and kind of rotate from side to side. So as if I'm trying to drop my knees in a little bit of a windshield wiper motion, really finding that full range of motion and mobility through our hip joints. Take about one more on each side. And then coming back through to center, let's find the full expression of the pose, folding forward. I'm making this a passive fold, meaning I'm letting my upper body round and I'm just kind of melting into it, not pushing or forcing my way into the shape. <sighs> Slowing down your breath. Just letting your upper body be really heavy. Hmm. Walk your hands in, start to lift all the way back up and just come to take a seat, release. It might feel good just to twist a little bit here, left hand to your right knee, open your chest to the right. And second side, right hand to your left knee, twist open to the left. And coming back through to center. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing this pre-ride yoga stretch. I hope you feel really good in your body, and hopefully you'll feel the effects of this when you're on your horse and in the saddle. Remember, it's also super important to stretch after you ride. Um, I'm gonna be putting together a sequence for that as well, but really when it comes to maintaining your existing flexibility and also improving it, you wanna make sure that you're you know, doing something before and after that you ride. So preparing your body properly for the sport and also taking the time to kind of unwind and release the tension that you may have created throughout your lesson and throughout your ride. So I hope you find this helpful and beneficial for you. Please leave me a comment, subscribe if you don't already, and hopefully I'll be practicing again with you very soon.